Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It's time for another cast. This is going to be in four versus four on the hilly plateau. This is an awesome team map. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I do like the pyramids better, but this is kind of a similar feel to the pyramids. You've got uh, three mass extractors in your home base and then lots of expansion mexes that force everyone to spread out. And there's a lot of room out here for running in and around any kind of point defenses that people try to put up and all in all. It is a map that forces you to play expansively and build a lot of units, which usually means there's some epic battles going on. Also, there's a lot of reclaim all over the place, in the bases, in the expansions, everywhere. So you got to get some engineers out and reclaiming and engineer out the air factory. That's kind of odd. All right, let's go ahead and introduce the teams and we will get started on this. On the northern side, we have Corwin taking UEF, Chevalier as Cybrin, then we've got Executioner taking UEF and a Seraphim for Kill It. I'm going to laugh hysterically if Kill It gets killed with fire. On the southern side, we have Lextok going Cybrin in the gray color. Lextok 2. I'm not sure if that's a different person or a second computer. I'm going to assume that it's Lex Talk and run with that assumption. We got Disciple going UEF. Knight as Cybrin. And then last but certainly not least, Mr. Mackey going Seraphim. And I uh, got a couple of first air factories that are only building engineers, which is a really strange choice. I don't know why these guys do that. Perhaps. I don't know. The roll-off time is still slightly slower for the Cybern factory, so the first Cybern air really hurts you. And then UEF is not so bad, but it's not quite as high of a roll-off time, if I'm not mistaken. The last balance patch may have made it even, but it's definitely not better, so I don't know why you would go with the air factory as opposed to a land. One other thing that this hurts you with is if you have an early aggressive mech marine or something, you will not have any land factory to build a tank with, build your own labs with, anything like that. So it kind of hinders you in the early game, especially on the expansion and preventing expansion front. Now these guys up here have put out a ton of mobile anti-air. I'm sure that they were 100% expecting a first bomber from someone down here. And you can see Corwin actually wasted a substantial amount of mass preventing a bomber that didn't happen. So maybe it wasn't such a bad thing that these guys built first air. I mean, this is uh, several tanks that didn't get built and a whole lot of expansion that didn't happen with all of those anti-air units. Let's look at the southern side. Here we've got tanks moving down for both Executioner and Kill It. Looks like we've got some scouts with those and those are just gonna lock off the passes, make sure nothing sneaks in. Over here, we've got the ACUs sucking up as much reclaim as they possibly can. It looks like we've got three ACUs from the southern team in the middle here, and we have only two from the northern team. Chevalier are going to push forward and snag those mass extractors to prevent those from producing anything. And we've got Corwin moving up. So it will be three versus three in the center. And then we've got two ACUs off to the side on the right-hand channels. Got some mech marine, not mech marines, Mantis coming down here. Two versus three, but backup is on the way, so that is going to be a horrendous loss for Chevalier. He's going to have to run for the hills. He's going to lose one of his Mantis, maybe only one. Possibly more. He has re uh, reinforcements of his own in the back here, and quite the stream of units coming in. We've got four land factories built and an air factory going up which I would bet is going to produce bombers so he is actually sitting in a pretty good situation looks like Lexstock only has two land factories so that is a build power discrepancy but his teammate is going to make up for it disciple that is Soviet pride I think if I'm not totally mistaken I know he's only in 1100 um, this is his second computer as well. And as he always claims, if he's not playing Cyber, he's only in 1100. Don't believe him, people. This this number here is bull. <laughs> he is a 1600 player at minimum. All right. 
I was wondering why the balance looked a little off in the beginning of the game, and that is why, because Disciples in this game, and they're counting him. Over here on the right, looks like we do have more production from the Northern team, as well as a Tech 1 bomber coming down. This is going to fall. This expansion is going to be secured. We've got engineers back here that are free to move in and reclaim as they wish. ACU is going to stop any further progression, though. We do have some units moving up from the south. It looks like there are some tanks moving around the right-hand side, preparing for a possible run-by attempt. You have to keep an eye out over there. Not seeing a whole lot of air presence, which is actually kind of odd. Typically, you would see much more than this. Perhaps there will be some other things going on later. Got a Tech 2 point defense down, and the middle executioner has gone Tech 2. It's going to allow him to lock this down, and he's going to throw down a tack launcher right under the scouts of the enemy team. <laughs> Not the ideal position for being subtle about it, but he will be able to reach basically the entire map from this location, and as long as he can keep his eco up, which he is not at the moment, or if a teammate who does have good e eco can assist it, which kill it does, then he can produce tack missiles, but he needs to get those launching very quickly. Got Tech 2 engineers out up here for executioner already, throwing down a buzzkill. A single TMD is all you need up here. Um, the UEF stationary tack only takes one to deny it. So it's not really that hard. One thing I have heard of people doing though, which is very sneaky, if you build a tack launcher and turn it off so it doesn't load, <clears throat> you can force your opponents into building a load of unnecessary TMD. And then once they build all of their tack missile defense, you can just reclaim your tack missile launcher and use reuse the mass to build more combat units. And you've put the opposing team at a severe disadvantage because they've dumped several thousand mass into building tack defense all over the place. So you can see that's already kind of happening here. Although these guys are being smart about it. They're just building a couple out front. Not placing it all over the place where it's not needed. So we've got two and two and some going down up here. But it does look like he is letting this load. He's going to hang on to that tack that's in it. And we'll have to watch out and see where he launches that at a later time. So we've got quite the bit of Thans co or Mantis collecting over here. Yes, I was looking at the wrong person here. And we've got Tech 2 on the field. Rhinos rolling out for Chevalier. And a drop. That is a single... Ilshiva. Yes, T2 Factory must be in the back. There it is back there. And no! Lextok has gotten snagged <laughs> by the Mantis Horde. He walked too far forward and got his uh, ACU tangled in the units, and that is going to leave him dead. That is one thing you do not want to have happen, ever. You do not overextend your ACU versus a Cybern opponent because that is exactly what happens. Get under your feet and block your retreat. And that means we've got a three versus four, but there are plenty of units over here. I think Disciple should be able to secure this pretty well. He should be able to reclaim all of this to get some more factories or something online and typically you can see faster tech from a person with two bases than with just one so yeah the other thing that's good about this is that most of the spam that was up here is now dead Lextoc took it all with him in that ACU blast and it is not being replenished terribly quickly we do have T2 factories online instead of T1 so we are seeing a bit more uh, rhinos than mantis at the moment, but that will eventually become a problem if some more defenses don't come online down here. On the right hand side, these Ilshivas kiting away, showing what they're good at. Although they are now in range and that mobile shield is causing issues galore. There's a mongoose back in here, spraying away with his Gatling gun. Horribly inaccurate weapon, but, you know, the mongoose does have AoE, and it does very well at killing off hordes of T1s. That's what you need to use it for. It does not necessarily fare as well versus T2, 
but it does do pretty well if you do manage to kite away. Just gotta be very careful with your micro. They do require babysitting. One of the reasons that I don't particularly like to use them. And moving around the outside edge here, we got a slight little pushback from the northern side. It is going to force a retreat by the southern forces. And that side gap there is now secure. A little bit of push over here though, poking and prodding away. You don't ever want to be sitting still. When you start sitting still and turtling, bad things happen to you. Always want to keep your opponent on their toes and this entire force is about to go poof because it's being caught between two opposing T2 armies. And yes, that is going to be a hard loss. But now all of these Thams are going to be able to push up. Ilshiva is coming in to intersect. I think this will be okay gonna lose some uh, interceptors that was a very effective raid snagging air control with the t1 tanks <laughs> a little bit of eco raiding going on on the left hand side pillars being produced by Corman looks like he is getting another ACU upgrade not sure what that is possibly either it is either gun or RAS probably gun he are no, he doesn't have it. Never mind. That is T2. I thought he already had T2. I was misreading his numbers. He is getting the T2 upgrade over there. Got some hoplites running in to join the fight. This is the longest direct fire range on any T2 unit right here. I believe it is 37 total range on a small area of effect weapon. Incredibly effective again at wiping out clumps of tech one units it is brutal not necessarily the best thing you could possibly use versus t2 you have to be very careful with your micro because those are fragile units they only have 550 health apiece a good counter to hoplites if you're getting annoyed to death by these things is to build tech one bombers a couple of tech one bombers and those things die and typically they're running around in clumps because people are microing them in and out and trying to get the best use they can out of the range so a lot of times they'll be very susceptible to T1 or T2 bombers. T1 bombers are cheap. You should always be using them. That is something that I've been discovering recently on a bit of a more in-depth scale. Um, if you always build T1 bombers throughout the game the harassment that you can achieve with T1 bombers is absolutely hysterical and will do worlds of good as far as throwing your opponent off balance. You can use Tech 1 bombers to snipe off build power if he does not have shields. You can use it to kill off mobile missile launchers that are bothering your fire bases. You can use them to just deal area of effect damage to hordes of units before your units go in. If you have two people and one of them has 25 mantis and one of them has 35 mantis but the one who has 25 mantis has three or four tech one bombers those three or four tech one bombers on a split g attack move that spreads out the strafing pattern um, you can easily lay down half damage on anywhere from a dozen to 15 units with a couple of tech one bombers and that will decisively turn the battle in your favor it's a very handy tactic to use. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shift-G, you hold down Shift, select multiple targets, and then press G while still holding down Shift, and instead of attacking the targets in sequential order, pressing G will split the attack up. So it will relatively evenly distribute the attack orders. If you select 20 bombers, select 10 targets, press Shift-G, uh, around two bombers will hit per target sometimes it's not very evenly distributed but it's a very good tool to use and it reduces the amount of micro that you need to hit multiple targets at once when it starts getting hilarious is when you start using it with strap bombers because you can control 50 strap bombers quite easily hitting multiple targets when you're using the shift G you can just carpet bomb entire sections of the map very handy Alright, getting back into this game, we're seeing more and more T2 build up. We're at 18 minutes at the moment, and I'm honestly very surprised that we have not been seeing a lot of T3. There is a T3 factory up here on the northern side, we've got Loyalists coming out for Chevalier. 
And it looks like we do have a few Titans from Disciple. This is another unit that I've not had a full appreciation of. The Titan. The last couple of games that I've played on maps like this, I usually tend to discredit the Titan as not a very strong weapon and just kind of forget about it. And to be completely honest, it is fairly weak. But what you don't expect is the sheer speed of these units. When you're dealing with Titans, they just pop up where you least expect it because they're so freaking fast. They just run around everything and dive in and they do a decent enough amount of damage. I mean, they're not super strong units, but you can see here three of them took out a tech one point defense and just barely lost the shield on one unit, which is already recharging. Got Corsairs coming in. and to wipe out this expansion and then start moving northwards. People who spam Titans, it can get incredibly annoying. They're fast, they're agile, they can micro around bombers, they can kite around your units if they are in the lower tiers. Of course, you can't really kite a Tech 3 unit. Run away, let your shields recharge, dive in, do some more damage. It gets incredibly frustrating dealing with those. I guess what I'm saying is I have a new appreciation for this weak little unit because I've gotten shredded by them a couple of times here recently. Although these Corsairs are doing... Or no, those are Janus's. What am I thinking? Corwin is napalming <laughs> those Titans to death. I do kind of like the fiery rage that rains down from the Janus, but I don't like the inaccuracy of it. Excellent at destroying build power, though. Horrendously effective at killing off swarms of engineers. And also for laying down damage on groups of units. Looks like we do have T3 air, T3 power generator going down for Corwin. He is going to be able to start building ASF or strap bombers or gunships even, depending on what his choices in life may be. Executioner's got T3 on his ACU and he's throwing down T3 point defense, trying to break into Knight's base. Not sure why he needs T3 point defense to do that, but he is going to have a slight bit of issue because demolishes are going to start coming and hanging out on this cliff. T3 point defense can't hit him because of the hill and the T3 artillery can easily hit the base. I'm going to have to see how that one works out for him. Although his handy dandy teammate Chevalier may actually cover his own his uh, advance with his own T3 mobile arty. Got more clumping up up here. I like the wall sections. It leaves you less of a flank to deal with. Alright. Quantum Gateway down. There is a Monkey Lord. That is going to be our first T4 of the game. We have T3 Air on the southern side right there. And potentially, yes, T3 Air very soon right there as well. So let's see. Monkey Lord moving northward. To take inventory on the northern side. Got a Megalith about a quarter of the way done. Got T3 Land and T3 Air as previously mentioned not much else going on alright Monkey Lord is taking a defensive posture I would not run it into that base for sure all those T3 point defense will easily kill it before it can break down the shields add a couple overcharges from the ACU and you have a dead monkey which is essentially a mass donation looking at a rough ASF count Looks like the southern team does easily have air control. So that is something going for them. They're going to have to exercise that strength, though. Monkey Lord heading up towards the north. So we've got air support factories going down and some more power. Corwin's going to go a very heavy air, it looks like. And he is the only one that is doing so at the moment. Megalith is about 60%. Monkey Lord is swinging all the way around the right side. And this is why fire bases are relatively ineffective. All of your mass is plunked down in one spot, and all the enemy has to do is walk around it. For those of you who wonder why I get frustrated sometimes with badly placed fire bases, this is exactly it, showcase number one on why fire bases typically are not as effective as mobile units. For the amount of mass in these Ravagers and everything the Executioner has built up here, he could have built quite a few Percivals, which would do very well at stopping this. 
But the Megalith is done. That will easily wipe out this Monkey Lord. Not much of an epic battle to be had when you have twice the health and more range with roughly equivalent damage. That Monkey is going to turn in terror and run. Now, one of the funniest things I've seen before is it is actually possible to micro a Monkey Lord or two Monkey Lords and kill a Megalith if you can get behind it, which is very funny to watch happen. You can actually micro around the shots to a certain extent from max range. Once you get close, it's not as much of a viable option, but it can be done. Got a Megalith for the Southern team going up. They are going to need something to deal with this problem incoming, and we have three T3 mobile artilleries. Those are Cyber Trebuchets with the brutal, humongous seven area of effect on those. You do not want those punching holes into your armies. Megalith gradually moving southwards. Where did our Monkey Lord go? There it is. It is in full retreat. We got a fat boy online. Loads of power going down in the back. And lots of T3 HQs. I would not be surprised at all if we start seeing Rambo comms. That is exactly what that is. The UEF Rambo commanders are probably the best all around. Actually, not even probably. They are the best all around Rambo SACUs a huge amount of health on those with the personal shield and they do a very large amount of damage on a decent range they're very hard to kill just one or two of them can cause major problems even for an army with t4s in it this is going to be an issue because if this megalith keeps pushing it is going to get killed he is going to stop that is good I'm going to do a little damage to this base before he runs it any further but we do have a very nearly finished Megalith. We have a Fat Boy and we have a Spider. These two together can kill a Megalith pretty easily. And once you throw another Megalith into it, yeah, there's not really any chance. So this needs to be watched carefully. And Strat Bombers! Dropping their bombs. Looks like they were going after the mobile anti-air first. ASF chasing this away. We've got two players going air pretty hard on the southern team. Disciple and Mr. Mackey. Together, those guys have a pretty good handle on it. Strap Bombers being built by Corwin. That Megalith is going to back the hell up. Running backwards with its guns exposed. Second Megalith on the left. This is going to be a bit tricky for the Southern team. We have two Megaliths versus a single Megalith, Fatboy, and Monkey Lord. I think with very good micro and the accompaniment of these units, the two Megaliths can win this, but it all comes down to the micro. Who is better at it? We got more power going down up here. T3 land churning away. Why do you have two T3 land HQs? That is a curious situation. All right, Megaliths have turned tail and run Where's my zoom? There we go. There is Mr. Fatboy chilling out under a shield over there. Or behind a shield, rather. Megalith and Monkey Lord going to come back. And there's our two handy-dandy crabs on the northern side. Is that, uh, yes, that is going to be laying bricks. Those are the Megalith eggs. Dropping them off to hatch its very own escort. Carrying his own posse with him. Got a transfer of units here. Megalith given over to kill it. And the incoming Fat Boy fire is severely disrupting the Megalith's hatchery. Megalith is quite the endangered species, you know. Its eggs are very vulnerable. And plus, when its eggs hatch, it's a completely different species. So this metaphor is totally falling apart. Oh well. Strat Bombers winging around to the southern side. Looks like they're going to probably strike out at this megalith if it gets too exposed. 
Do we have any nukes or other interesting things? We have a Novax going down for Mr. Mackey. Why on earth would you build a Novax at this point in the game? I don't know. Unless they just feel comfortable with their level of defense. There's an veritable horde of Percivals to accompany this fat boy. That is the full strength of the UEF military right here on show for you. We've got a Rambo com, about 20 Percivals, and a fat boy to back all of them up. That is the ideal UEF task force. And then on the right hand side we have the full complement of Cybern weaponry. We've got Hoplites, Bricks, a Monkey, and a Megalith. Most of them at pretty well full health. My only concern is there is a disturbing amount of Othams over here. The awful Othams may not be something to worry about in small numbers, but they do deal ludicrous amounts of damage in large numbers. They have the highest DPS of any of the T3 assault tanks, or bots, whichever faction you may happen to be, and they have a Yathatha to accompany them. So this is about to get a bit dicey for this southern edge here. We've got multiple T4s about to clash, the air battles being fought, Quick check for nukes and various and a sundry other things before we go watch the Clash of the Titans. We've got a fat boy, another megalith on the way. We do have nuke defense, which is not yet loaded. Another nuke defense going down there. No nukes as of yet. And here comes the Slugfest. I think that the Northern team is going to win this because of the sheer number of Othams. That chicken is going to dive bomb directly in, and holy cow, I missed an ACU death. Stalled power and got hit by strat bombers. That is exactly what happened. And crap, that is horrendous. Ah. That was an unnecessarily stupid death. And that's going to drop all the T4s over here without doing any significant damage to this task force. That is horrendous. This is not going to end well. The only thing good that we have happening here is that two fat boys are now online and there is a monstrous amount of Percivals. So that, with the help of a Rambo com and the backup of the fat boys, should, I repeat, should be able to stall this. And there's going to be a buttload of reclaim over here. Holy cow, that's a lot. Pretty much get online anything you want. Where is Mr. Novax? Is he already across the map? I don't see him. Here's the satellite system. Where is Le Little Blue Dot? Probably looking right at it and not seeing it. There it is right there. Evidently it had not yet launched out of the center. Okay, so quick explanation of what happened over here. I can piece it together from chat and also from what was on the map before. There was a large amount of strap bombers up here. I do apologize for missing this. The strap bombers attacked. At the exact moment that the strap bombers were come over, coming over, Knight lost power. He hit power stall, and the bombs slipped through his shield. That is very, very sad. You probably saw it happening on the mini-map over there. I did not, unfortunately. But I think it's pretty easy to see what happened, especially considering the messaging that was going on. I stalled power and got strated. <laughs> Expert sniping. So, a bit of bad luck for the southern team, good luck for the northern team, whichever way you want to look at it. But I think the southern team is actually still okay. They may or may not get this reclaim back. They really need to get this reclaim. There's engineers moving in from the northern team, and that is a bad thing. Percival's pushing up. No T4 to deny. Percival's are easily going to win over all these units, I would think. And we got two fat boys versus a megalith, which is a winning proposition. So, if the southern team can manage to lock down this reclaim, they could actually win this pretty easily. Uh, they still have a decent amount of map control. They still have air control. Not by quite as big a number. Well, actually, yes, they do by quite as big a number. There's This is all the ASF that the Northern team has. But the Northern team has a lot of strat bombers. So we'll have to be very quick on the interception there. Um, this is actually going pretty brilliantly. It is two versus four, but I think this is the best possible position you could have for being two versus four. Looking very good. 
And here's Mr. Novax. Where is he targeted? Out of curiosity. A single Novax really is not that awesome of a tool. Also, he should be targeting the mass fabricators because he could chain reaction all of those instead of wasting two firing cycles trying to kill that and failing. Very bad implementation of that. And Strap Mommers making their run completely and utterly failing. Blue is going to lose all of his ASF, leaving only pinks. But Mr. Mackey does have a substantial number of ASF, so I think they still are at least breaking even on ASF production. Let's see here. That's a lot of Rambo comms. There's also a lot of potential reclaiming. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Disciple is actually bouncing off of a power stall every now and then because I think the shields went down momentarily on those. Perhaps it's just how I'm looking at them. Yeah, shields are staying up. Ignore me, I know not of what I speak. Strap Bombers moving out to the right to clean up some of these units out here that we're trying to reclaim. And lots of anti-air fire crisscrossing over here fat boys moving to the left we can see all of these wall sections up here trying to block progress or easy progress anyway of any units these guys saying building lots of sams to prevent anything from slipping past looks like we have nuke defense on all sides of the northern team plenty of shielding up to prevent that novax from hurting anything and i don't see any nuke launchers. Quantum Gateway, yes. Unless I'm staring right at it and not seeing it, which is a distinct possibility. It would not be the first time. Got a fat boy and plenty of T3 units guarding the right hand side once again. And another mega lift megalith up here on the north. Looks like a T3 artillery going down. These guys are making the strangest choices in units to build. Some of these I really sincerely do not understand. Also, I find it extremely hilarious, <clears throat> excuse me, that everyone, everyone is building nuke defense and I have yet to see an actual, ah, there's a nuke and it is almost loaded. We're about to get to see a launch here question is, is these guys' defense loaded? And the answer to that question is yes. There, yellow has one loaded right on the tip there. This is going to be really hard to bypass. And two loaded in the back. And another one loaded over here. Yeah, pretty much completely solid nuke defense. This is not really they're not really any good places to land that nuke it's not going to get its mass value out of it no matter where they shoot it the duke is about 75 percent complete pro tip folks do not build four t3 p gens around an artillery it will actually slow down the firing rate because of a kind of odd little glitch um if you build three, the adjacency lets your artillery fire faster up to the third one. And then the fourth one kind of kills the whole deal we got going here. Fat boys still putting fire down up here. That megalith very nearly dead without returning a single shot. Chevalier starting the Mazer upgrade. That means we're about to see a Telemazer. Probably going to go after nuke defense. If these guys do build a nuke and plan to go that route, once again, I still do not see a nuke. So, I'm not sure on that one. Alright. Of course, if you can kill an ACU, that would leave it 1 versus 4 with full share off. And if blue is dead, then there's no more land defense. And if pink is dead, then there's no more air defense. So whichever one of these dies, it's not a good thing at all. 
Yup, teleporter upgrade started. There he is, yellow's ACU. There it is right there. Have to keep a very close watch on where we see the little yellow blip pop up. <laughs> oh, the Duke is now firing away. Where did it pick its target? Nobody knows till the shot lands. I would have aimed at build power. Right now, shields are fluctuating for Chevy because of the massive power consumption of the teleport. Oh! What? That was... <laughs> I can't believe I caught that. The, uh, the artillery shot hit an ASF. That was perfect. So perfect. ASF completely blocked that artillery shot. That artillery would have landed right in here and done some horrendous damage, just like that one just did. At least it was a temporary prevention. In comes the strats, and that is so many strats. How are you going to stop that? Can they be killed? And where are they firing at? Oh my word, that was a brilliant interception. Only a couple of bombs, if any, got off. They were probably aimed at the Duke. And that is going to be air one for the Southern team. This is looking better and better. Got strats moving out to the right. Those are going to be able to easily plow under all of this Tech 3 here. Going to drop again on the Athatha, taking off over a quarter of the health in one pass. Strap Bombers are brutal. And I'm waiting for this teleport here. Nearly done on that Telemazer. Duke still firing away. Pounding down. Is there two online? I thought I saw two shots. Yes, there are. There's another one right there. So two T3 artilleries. Well, if these guys want to kill one, they definitely need to kill Disciple because I think Disciple will end them all. Now that air control isn't a problem anymore, if Pink dies, losing the Strat Bombers is not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, Disciple has plenty of units to deal with anything that the Northern team can throw. We got two chickens. But this chicken is going to get obliterated by strap bombers, which it actually very neatly dodged. That was impressive. We got another chicken up here that is going to run headlong into a marching swarm of Rambo comms. That is not going to end well for it. Chevalier pausing momentarily. Not sure. Oh, never mind. I know what that was aimed at. Nuke defense. He's knocking out all of the nuke defense with those artilleries. And... This chicken's going to go down. Still got 38k health on this one. Another dodge. Brilliant. Not a single... Ah. A couple of strat bombers hit. Two strat bombs. And an answering chicken. Two answering chickens are going to start... Yeah, that's, that's no way that's going to do any damage. I was going to say, it might get far enough into the base that it can do some hurt with the lightning. But, no. No. Is going to get stalled right outside the base. That is the end of that. So we have one fat boy is all the northern team have left. They're going to start killing off the wall sections up here and try to slip in the back. But honestly, I don't think that's going to get anything done. Teleporter complete. Chevalier can teleport whenever he wishes. He just needs to pick a target and go. Disciple standing next to an absurd amount of Tech 1 point defense. This is basically the only sure thing that can protect you from a teleport. And the loading bar has begun. Where is he going to go? That is the question. I'm going to slow down. Oh, I was already at zero. I thought I was at plus two. Let me slow down a tick here. We're going to try to pinpoint exactly where he goes. And there it is, right there next to Mr. Mackey. Mr. Mackey is quite doomed, I assure you. And that's going to leave Chevalier free to kill off whatever he pleases in the backside of this base. Honestly, I wouldn't... Oh, uh, Strat Bombers are going to do a lot of damage. Is it going to be enough? Teleport! Where'd he go? 
right there next to Disciple and boom! No more damage. Disciple taken down to about 75% health, but he is still alive. He has his Dukes and he has his Fat Boys. Question is, does he have enough to maintain? We got another chicken down here, which is proceeding northward to try to help with the defense. And there's another humongous batch of reclaim. At this point, I think he could safely build a maver and not mastal. <laughs> we got two chickens. We got multiple T3 power generators. No, actually, we have four chickens. So yeah, this is going to be Reclaim Mayhem and trying to build enough air to intercept any Strat Bomber runs that come in. That Duke, or those Dukes rather, are doing great damage to the northern side. I think that Mr. Mackey owned the Nuke Launcher though. So there is no more Nuke Launcher. We got a Nuke Launcher going down for Disciple right here. He can keep the Nuke defense suppressed with his Dukes. And that will leave him pretty well free to do as he wishes, nuking the bases. Got this fat boy online for the northern team, accompanied by a somewhat respectable amount of Percivals and a single Rambo comp. But you can look at the two fat boys here and the loads of Percivals coming in. Oh, gotta get around, gotta get around, about to lose that fat boy. The mobile shields up here are doing a pretty good job of intercepting some of the incoming fire. And Fatboy Fire has retargeted on Percival's for some reason. There's a couple of guns back on this Fatboy. These need to be microed so that the one with the shield up is in front. And that Novax still pinpointing this Fatboy. The Fatboy's shield is actually down. This Novax with a little tiny bit of assistance could kill this Fatboy in a couple of firing cycles. When was the last time you saw a Novax kill a T4? Or help kill a T4? Here comes the beam. And a solid 4k of damage coming down. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? Mobile shield rolling in. And 600 health remaining. He's going to move forward and chase. Next firing cycle of the Novax. That is dead though. The brilliance of the Novax is as pinpoint precision. Which targeting bone is it on? It is good. Fat boy down. Thanks to the Novak. Strat Bomber's coming in to clean up these. Going to lose one fat boy to the lightning storm. And another to two Strat Bombers if they come in soon enough. It looks like Disciple is not going to make any headway on air anytime soon. His third Duke is very nearly up. At this point, I would actually focus fire and ACU. Because these two ACUs right here, if he focus fires the Duke right in between them, landing three consecutive shots is more than enough to kill those ACUs. Trying to see what is, uh, what is going on up here. People are screaming and I don't know why. A lot of those Rambo comms got eliminated over the course of time over here with these T3 units. Got to kite away. They are running now and doing tremendous amounts of damage to this force. There's actually a reasonable amount of, a of AOE on these guns and I think they do about 1k DPS. So very nice. Duke's taking down the power here. Now we are in power stall. Another fat boy rolling out it's under fire from the Novax that's going to start eating away at its shield. If Disciple can continue to knock out power generators that is going to lower shields for all of these guys and it's not going to end well. He needs to focus fire kill it. Kill it is already at only 12k health. He needs to land one Duke shot right there because it will also kill the T2 power generator which will transfer damage. If he can land that it will eliminate this entire right side here. <clears throat> And that will help him out a ton. Fatboy moving up just a little bit, getting a little bit brave. There is an answering Fatboy down here though, and the aforementioned Rambo comms, so not a big deal. 
and more power generators going down in a diamond. I don't know, that's probably going to be another air factory that goes in there for adjacency. Three dukes ready to open fire. Still targeted up here. Probably at this nuke defense. Yes. Which means that they could potentially get Executioner as collateral. Scouts moving around the back to get a better idea of what's going on. There is that nuke that I saw a moment ago. There it is right there. Not quite half loaded. Disciple so far has sucked down 187k mass in reclaim. Corwin at 30,000, Executioner at 80, and kill it at 90. So over double the next best player's reclaim. Strats wailing on the support commanders. This game started out rather slow, and I was afraid that it was going to be a bad game to watch, but honestly, this has turned into quite the struggle. I like this. We've got one versus three, and the one is actually doing very, very well. These other fat boys are going to need to come online fairly soon, though, because this is starting to get slightly worrisome. It's three dukes have successfully eliminated the nuke defense up there and are now going after power generators again all you gotta do is kill a freaking ACU why are you not targeting the ACUs and fire raining from above killing off two more power generators in an air factory and all of the shielding up here so starting to get bad for kill it that Novak's firing on Executioner? I think it is. <laughs> Anti-personnel satellite. Nope. It is moving over to the left. Headed off somewhere else to do what damage it may. Got some pillars moving in on the northern side. There are two titans there, but that many pillars I think will easily kill those two titans if they're not streaming in, but even so I think they will. And something's going to have to be done up there. This fat boy is getting dangerously close to the base. It's going to be able to start knocking out all of these sands, clearing the way for a strat bomber run in a little bit. Duke fire raining down on the northern side, knocking out some of this power and this air production, which is exactly what needs to happen, except for the ACUs. Now, granted... Sniping an ACU is kind of hard with T3 artillery, but with this short of a range, T3 artillery is very, very accurate. UEF has fairly significant AOE, and it does incredibly large amounts of damage per shot landed. So I think within two or three firing cycles, uh, you could easily kill an ACU. I know I keep harping on that, but I'm watching this, and I just keep screaming inside my head, why is someone not dead yet? Because you could eliminate an entire threat, and this is definitely a threat. This is getting to look really bad down here. We've got about 25 Othams, it looks like, and two chickens moving in, and there simply are not enough units over here to deny that. There just aren't. Um, there may be enough Rambo comms with very, very careful micro to kill these groups off one at a time, but I think that situation is not going to be given to Disciple. All he has to do is kill that white ACU, but there are now things bearing down on his base, which are looking kind of bad. Got two fat boys online up here, another one begun, and one that he's going to stop building right there for some reason. No engineers nearby. Rambo comms moving in. I'm going to start laying down some damage on these T3s and then probably shift to the chickens. Fat boys being produced on the front line, actually, by Executioner. Screw the walking distance. I'm going to build it up here where it can immediately get used. Or die very quickly. One or the other. Awasa being built. And... Mostly things huddling under shields, which is basically what you do when there's a duke trained on you with laser-like precision. That is a Maver. I am kind of happy that he's doing that and kind of sad that this game isn't uh, progressing better for him. 
maybe we'll get to see it fire. Because this is just kind of chilling at the moment. SACU's reclaiming. Two fat boys moving southward. Okay, this is this is easy now. Two fat boys, three fat boys by the time it gets up here. Uh, can easily waste all of this with the help of that. So no worries for Disciple whatsoever. Got another fat boy online building more quantum gateways. Producing T3 tanks for all he's worth. Lots of activity going on on the northern side, but it's kind of a fight against time. That experimental bomber is going to come online very soon. As long as it gets caught and intercepted, I think it will not be a problem. We do have a nuke loaded. Question is, is it going to be used and where? Both chickens are down. Fat boys are moving back northwards, trying to get some base for a buffer zone in between them and these two fat boys. And Rambo comms cleaning up the T3 tank, staying in range of the lightning in order to do so. It's going to lose at least one Rambo. And that is that. T3 point defense on the southern side is going to take care of the rest of all those. And the fat boys are going to be chased away. We've got three fat boys over here. Almost four. Disciple building T4 after T4. Going to be reclaiming these soon. I am sure the Maver going up quite speedily, actually. Very nice to see. And Dukes still pounding away up here. A little bit poor targeting. Probably just forgot that they were firing while his attention was diverted down here to killing off all of this crap. Um, yeah, I think we're actually seeing three Dukes firing at a T1 radar, which is kind of hilarious. That is the most overkill that I have ever seen ever. That may actually be the most overkill possible outside of the Aeon artillery or like a Yelona Oss nuke or something. Um, three Dukes firing at one T1 radar. That's 10 health versus who knows how many thousands of damage per shot landed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, more Rambo comms in on the way. Got four fat boys versus one right here. I wonder which one's going to win. And poof. Maybe not quite yet. There we go. Now it's dead. Novak still kind of hovering around out here, harassing the outside edges. Got a fat boy belonging to Corwin moving around the northern side. He's going to vet up on these uh, pillars over here. Scouts Ahoy for Disciple. I want to see what his vision is like. Actually fairly good. He does have Omni up. Doesn't have everything tagged, but he does have Omni, so you can see the buildings. Once you get three Dukes up, shields are no longer really a problem. Um, it just isn't. The amount of splash and damage coming down is more than enough to kill off any amount of shields that they can build. And there's the nuke. Is that the yes? That is the nuke launch location, and I think it's good. Coming up, and see where our impact point is. I didn't see any loaded nuke defense. Oh, that one was loaded. Oh man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, a quick end was not brought about, but I think we are going to be seeing the end soon because we now have four fat boys, five fat boys. Let's count here real quick, shall we? Because this is, this is what I would definitely call an army. We got five fat boys, we have 30 Percivals, and we have eight Rambo comms. If that can't kill it, I don't know what can because this is pretty much the rolling definition of an unstoppable force. Fat boys individually are not very good direct fire weapons and holy cow their strats coming in and that oh well good. At least all the strats are dead now. 
Fat boys are going to have to come back and kill this one off, which is kind of sad. I was really looking forward to that advance, but you can't have a fat boy rolling into your base on a post. That's just not smart. So we're going to take a little detour and lay down some fire on this guy who is running for the hills. That's going to buy the northern team some more time. A single fat boy is not a good direct fire weapon. A couple of fat boys can be defeated with solid micro and thinking outside the box. By the time you get four fat boys, we're talking about, what, 50, no, 12,000 damage on extended range and like 15,000 damage per second close up. I mean, these guys, these can just waste anything at that point and really, no radar? By the way, I was warned about that desync, it does not change anything. So in a minute, I will screw this pop-up, and we'll be okay. Bum, bum, ba -dum. There we go. All right. Well, hello, little strap bomber. Where are you headed? And a gunship around the backside. That's interesting. Last-ditch attempt. Face plant into the Sams. And that is that. Yeah, by the time you get... 15k, 12k damage rolling into your base. How do you stop that? Other than building, even if you have four to five direct fire experimentals, unless you micro them out to come in from five different directions, the fat boys are going to be dealing damage to multiple targets at once. And laying down that much damage that fast is very, very hard to overcome. So fat boys could pretty much roll where they want to unopposed by the time it reaches that point. I think that we're finally seeing the wrap up to this. This Mavor is 80% or so, 85%. And we've got the Dukes online, we've got the fat boys coming in. There is no way that this is gonna end anyway but with death for the northern team unless there is a very serious screw up by disciple or a brilliant play teleport or something from the northern team but i really don't see that happening base getting wiped out by those dukes again aim for the acu please this could have been over already <laughs> i think it is aimed there now so we're seeing that is about 5,500, 6,000 damage per hit from the Duke. Very respectable damage number. Novax is going to start traveling north. Shield coming back online momentarily, but I think it will be eliminated very quickly. More Duke shots coming in in accuracy, not allowing for a death there. Got the T3 units moving southward, but I don't think... Actually, they are going to kill one fat boy. Don't think there's going to be enough to break all the way into the base, but hey, why not try? ACU running for shield coverage, and boom! Lucky inaccurate shot, walked directly into artillery fire. That means all of this goes poof, and there it goes, no longer a worry. And what is this? What is this? We have a Rambocom that snuck all the way around into the backside of the base. That is interesting. Don't think it's going to get very far. I am compensating for something. <laughs> oh, we all know what that looks like. Everyone likes the Gaio cast, and we all know what happened there. Oh, man. If you can build anything out of Reclaim, that is definitely one of the better things to uh, kill the enemy team with. All right. Mavor is now raining down destruction from the heavens this is like the judgments of the gods falling upon the UEF so much artillery fire there goes executioner Corwin is last alive he's gonna throw this Awasa in the direction of the southern team and There goes the Awasa. Crash land in the middle here. <laughs> Rambocom was killed over here, by the way. Did not get the Maver, thank goodness. And now... Where is Corwin? 
There is Corwin. He is very nearly dead. Looks like he took an artillery shot to the face. Or multiple artillery shots to the face. I want him to die to the Novaks. That's what I'm hoping. I want him to get shot in the face with a laser, but no, that's going to be a direct impact artillery. All right, that was an epic game. <laughs> I'm going to go back and post, and I'm going to insert the ACU death to those strap bombers so you guys will get to see that. Well, you've already seen it. So, yeah, I'm commenting on something that's already happened for you but has not happened for me yet. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Meh. All right. But awesome game nonetheless. Artillery intercepts with a ASF and multiple other really funny coincidences and other things happening. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I definitely did. A little bit of a slow start, but hey, it was good right up to the end. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and all the support that you've given me and this channel. I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys in the next cast. See you later.